Welcome to Cubs Classics, proudly presented by Prevagen. It's 1990s week, Sammy Sosa's first career three homer game. Let's watch together. Hello again, everybody. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Wayne Larrabee. And look at here. I took off my jacket. I took off my sweater. I'm working in short sleeves. Summer, folks, is finally here, right? Well, the weather is gorgeous today, and hopefully things will work out a little better for the Cubs than they did yesterday. And they've got Jamie Navarro going to the mound. He threw a gem at Florida, went the distance, and he's opposed by Terry Mulholland. Mulholland got perhaps the best pickoff move to first base, so he nullifies the running game. And I have to say one thing, Wayne, everybody talks about the Cubs pitching, but unfortunately they're at the bottom end of the National League in hitting. Yeah, they came through a tough stretch of uh, hitting where we ran into pitching staffs like Atlanta and Florida, but uh, this is a homestand where the Cubs hope they can make some hay uh, with the bats. Uh, split so far with Philadelphia. They go for the rubber bats today and then Montreal in over the weekend. Well, the, uh, the sad note, I think, uh, is Ray Sanchez. It looks like he's going to be out for a while. And he played, he wasn't hitting much, but boy, he really helped with his glove. An outstandingly good defensive shortstop. Well, now Jose Hernandez is going to get his opportunity to try to show what he can do. If you remember last year, he had 13 home runs off the bench. He's a very solid defensive player and has come in defensively at third base in a flip flop batting order. Now he's getting an opportunity to play every day. And I look to have him supply a little more power from the Cubs, Wayne, because he can hit the ball out of the park. And you know, Steve, I talked with him. He is a utility ball player, and, and he has performed at several different positions, as Steve mentioned, not the least of which is center field on occasion for the Cubs. But his natural position is shortstop, and Harry, that's the position he's most comfortable with, and he should provide some decent defense. Oh, he'll play an adequate shortstop, no doubt about that, but let's get some runs. You know, we have a chance to win the second straight two out of three. And uh, if you can win two uh, every series two out of three, you can win your division easily. Yeah, there's no question about that. But uh, again, the hitting, you're hoping that they rebound a little bit here at home with the bats. They're batting uh, 241 last in the National League in hitting. But uh, this is a team that hopefully had a pitcher in Terry Mulholland that they can get a hold of and, and really make some hay on, a left-hander. You know, uh, fellas, the thing that bothers me when you talk about hitting, you only got one home run hitter in the whole lineup. If he doesn't connect, the only guy that might account for two, three runs, four runs sometimes uh, with one swing of the bat. Other teams have three, four, five of those kind of guys. Well, I think a couple of surprises this year. One has been Ryan Sandberg. He's hit 11 home runs, and Scott Service has hit nine. So you're getting some power there. But we're never going to be known as a power-laden ball club, Harry. Well, maybe someday we will. Here is the Philadelphia lineup. Given by Jim Fregosi, their popular manager, Votero leading off, Mormon Dini hitting second, and uh, Jeffries third. Incavilla in left, Zeal at third, Eisenreich in right. San Diego behind the plate, Benjamin at chart, and Terry Mulholland, whose lifetime career record against the Cubs is eight and eight. The Mandu defensive alignment for the Cubs, Timmons in left, McRae in center, Sosa in right, Gomez at third, Hernandez at chart, Sandberg at second, Grace at first, Jamie Navarro on the mound, Scott Service behind the plate, and the umpires are Bruce Fremming behind the plate, Charlie Williams at first, Steve Ripley at second. And Mark Hirschbeck at third. You know, it's with real sadness. Uh, everybody in their business, I'm sure, knows this man, knows of him. Doom, somewhere along the line, we worked with him a number of years when uh, we were doing the White Sox games on WMAQ. He retired a few years ago. And Joe, Joe Corneo, our uh, assistant producer and director, uh, passed along the sad information. But our good friend Dan Hozak has passed away. Certainly our sincere sympathy and condolences to his family. A wonderful guy, a longtime worker in radio, Dan Hozak, no longer with us. All right, we're ready to play baseball. And uh, 
do you think Seattle's got any chance against the Bulls? Maybe I'll ask that of the win. Well, I think they have a chance there. I just don't think they're going to beat them. But certainly, if they do have uh, an opportunity to break through on the home court, it would be in the ball game tonight because of the long layoff. You don't know how the Bulls are going to adjust to that. But I think just the fact that Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan and the fact that the Bulls play so well as a team together, I think they'll beat them. But I think tonight is something that they might be a little wary of. You know, running a close second in attention and publicity, Princess Di, who's in our great city. I haven't seen her at the ballpark yet. There's rumors around she'll be here. But I imagine she has a lot of things to do. Everything I look down at refers to her making an appearance. She is a very attractive young lady, of course. Well, the Cardinals are still in first place, a half a game ahead of Houston, and then three teams, the Cubs, the Reds, the Pirates, are all four games out. I see Bruce Freming, the plate umpire, great umpire, and I can't help, I started to talk about that autographing business yesterday. You know, with all the negative things happening to our athletes and our game and our sports, and then the, the worst public relations thing I ever heard of. Imagine complaining about an umpire getting a couple autograph baseballs from various ball players in the league to give to certain charities or to hold for auctions for charities as Bruce Fremming has done for not this year, many, many years. And somebody's complaining about it. I guess the only guy with force enough to have his name mentioned about his objection would be the league president in Coleman. And I find it hard to believe that a trivial thing like that would come in for that, that kind of attention. But that's the world we're living in. You never know what you're going to read about or what you're going to read about. Jamie Navarro last time out against Florida was brilliant. He went the distance, gave up seven hits, just one earned run. He's faced the Phillies one time in his life. That was last year. He went eight and a third innings, and he's 1-0 and oh with no earned run average. So today, they have to take the butt away from Otero. With that in mind, Gomez is as close as you'd want to be at third base. Otero takes the pitch a little bit low and inside. I want to qualify what is said about what you read and also what you see or, or uh, hear on the radio, half of what you see and hear on the radio and television also. One ball, one strike. Boy, look how close Gomez is. <laughs> and I think Otero was aiming that swing right for him. Now Leo drops back a few feet. And Grace also drops back at first base. This is a very impressive little guy. 5'5, five, five, 140 pounds. Fouls it off again. Last year, Jamie had a lot of success with the split finger fastball, a lot like what Steve Craxel is using this year. Jamie's gotten away from that somewhat, but I think he's going to go back to it a time or two today, along with a good slider. Line drive sharply hit foul. Boy, the rooftops are well populated around the ballpark. Well, folks, <laughs> enjoy yourself today. You can't sit on the roof and watch the Bulls tonight. You'll have to be inside at a price. Here's a high fly ball will be caught. Brian McRae shaving his eyes. One gone. Otero has finally retired. That brings up Mickey Morandini. Now Morandini also a bunt threat. He doesn't do it often, but he's been watching Otero. And Otero's got so much mileage out of that bunt that Morandini is trying it on occasion. And so Gomez is in fairly close to third on Morandini. You don't have to worry about Inky bunting, however. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the pitch a little below. They got Inky and Dinky. And I tell you, little Dinky hits the ball almost as hard as Big Inky. 
who yesterday hit two three run homers for six RBIs with two swings to the bat. Two balls, no strikes. Boy, Laurendini had to cut the miss. Oh, look at the average. Can you believe? Rodriguez of Montreal, they'll be here Friday, you know. Leads the league in homers with 21. Not only that, there's a foul ball out of play. He also leads and runs batted in. Oh, he's two behind Bagwell in that department. He leads in slugging percentage and extra base hits. Henry Rodriguez. Boy, he's become a a big star overnight. Pitches inside. When he's with the Dodgers, he was a utility outfielder. Now given a chance to play, he is red hot. Fouled it off his leg. Three and two. That's the thing about baseball, Steve. It doesn't take many weeks or many games or many feats to suddenly make you a national name. Especially when you have the type of coverage that baseball has these days. Three balls, two strikes. Inside, Morandini gets a base on ball. And he's the best base runner on this team at 18 for 18 in the stolen base department. So you have to beware of him, and you've got a man who came off the shelf straight off the disabled list to go four for five yesterday, and Greg Jeffries. That was really remarkable display by Greg Jeffries. He was hurt early in April. Had a suffered a broken thumb and sliding into a base at first. Yesterday was the first game he played. After a two month layoff, strike call. The first time up, he hit the very first pitch down the left field line for two bases. The next time up, he hit the very same first pitch down the right field line for two bases. Wound up with four out of five. Jeffries. Double play ball. Out at second for one. Out at two for two. Six for three and out. We're going to bottom of the first. No score. Let Marquee Sports Network deliver fresh baseball news and analysis to you with Cubs 360 Daily. Though baseball may be on pause, we're pulling together the most knowledgeable voices coming to you daily from their home to yours. I think all baseball fans, all of us, appreciate the fact that they're working very hard to, to try to make this happen. Cubs 360 Daily, fresh each weeknight at 6 on Marquee Sports Network. Proudly presented by Miller Lite. You might take something for your heart, your joints, or your digestion. So why wouldn't you take something for the most important part of you, your brain? With an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish, Prevagen has been shown in clinical trials to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Tell us we can't, and we'll prove you wrong. Knock us down, and we'll get right back up. Call us risk takers, misfits, bad boys. But we know what we want, and it feels like American muscle. Looks like advanced engineering, and smells like fresh cut grass. Bad boy, mow with an attitude. As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation. But blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, please donate. Every weekday night, tune into the stadium. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred wants to play as many games. Harry Carey back at Rigby Field. Here's Jim Riggleman's Mountain Dew starting lineup for the Cub. McRae, Sandberg, and Grace. Sosa, Gomez, and Timmons. 
Service, Hernandez, and Jamie Navarro on the mound. The defense for the Phillies, Incavilla, Otero, and Eisenreich, Zeal, Benjamin, Morandini, and Jeffries around the infield. McCray fouls off the first pitch. Terry Mulholland, who has a record of eight games, one and eight loss for his career against Cubs, against Cub teams. Mulholland throws a few more sliders than fastballs, and he throws high fastballs. There's a high pop fly. Goes, carries out pretty good. In the right field, easy out. Eisenreich takes care of McCray's. Fly ball one away. There you look at the numbers on Terry Mulholland. He's got very good control. Even in the days when the Philadelphia staff was the wildest staff in the National League, Mulholland always got the ball over the plate. He's got a great move to first base, so he pretty much nullifies the running game. But because he throws a lot of high fastballs, he's going to throw a lot of fly balls, and the wind is blowing straight out today, although it isn't blowing out all that briskly. Here's Sandberg. First pitch in there is strike call. Tomorrow's an off day. Montreal comes in for a Friday day game, a Saturday night game, and a day game Sunday. One strike to nothing. Line drive center field. Otero did he make the catch? He trapped the ball. He slipped as he started in for the ball, or he'd have probably caught it. A single for Sandberg. Hard hit line drive. Now watch Otero. The trap to. So that brings up Mark Grace. Grace one out of eight in the series. You know, Sandberg's always hit well against Mulholland. He's had six home runs off Mel Holland during his career. And Grace has three. And he too is a pretty well. 299 against Mel Holland. There's a high drive center field, but Otero goes back near the winding track. Grace hit the ball well, but out. Sandberg did a pretty nice job when he realized that Otero was going to set up and he knew he would make the catch. He ran back to first base and if Otero had caught this ball backpedaling he would have been able to move to second. But Otero does set up. He's able to set himself and Sandberg took a couple of steps see where the relay throw was coming and then had to retreat to the bag but it's a heads up play. Here's Sammy Sosa. He's hit only 160 against Mulholland, four out of 25 during his career. Harry, I think he's going to hit a home run today off Terry. There's a strike call. I tell you, that's an observation you can make every time he comes up. He no, there's some, hit a home some run. days you just feel it. I think he's going to hit one today off Mulholland. One strike to nothing. That even the count of ball on the strike. Terry's only given up six home runs in 65 innings, but he has given up 84 hits. And there's home run leaders at home, and Sosa one behind Rodriguez. Sosa two on the seven in the series. There's a high fly ball. My drop, my drop, my drop on the run. He's on the right. Makes a good catch. To retire the side, no run, one hit, one left. At the end of one, there is no score. This is internet stuff. Streaming stuff. Social stuff. You want it. You need it. And wow is the best way to enjoy it. Switch to save on all your favorite stuff. With a super fast internet connection for a price that's really something to see. $34.99 per month guaranteed for two years. And when you sign up today, get a $100 Visa prepaid reward card. Wow. People from Chicago, Pull for Chicago. We were 
root for his teams, celebrate his successes, push through his challenges. When people call us the second city, it's misleading. We're second to none. We're hardworking, resilient, but we have a good time. When you live in Chicago, you proudly call this home. Your bank should too. We're Wintrust, built here, for here. And we've taken our place at Chicago's bank because no other bank can say the same. Hey guy, hi there. Welcome to Hims. Should have done it years ago, and I feel like the young stud that I always imagined I was. Outstanding product works above and beyond our expectations. This has been a life changer, even in just a few weeks. Featured in GQ, Playboy, and Men's Health. Find out what all the buzz is about. Go to forhims.com/ed and get started with a free online visit while supplies last. When allergies attack, the excitement fades. Allegra helps you say yes with the fastest non-drowsy allergy relief. For 24-hour relief from your indoor and outdoor allergies, say yes to life's possibilities. Allegra, live your life, not your allergies. Harry Carey with Steve Stone and Wayne Larrabee. We go on the top of the second. And Big Inky comes up. To lead it off. I think Avilia has been hitting the ball to right field, and that's one of the reasons why his batting average for him is up there in the 290s. You know he's going to hit home runs, you figure he's going to drive in runs, but having a batting average that close to 300 is unusual for Incavilia. But that's because Dennis Mankey has him using right field, and we've seen him three times use right field in this series for base hits. He's four out of six in the two previous games. And two three run homers yesterday. Curveball outside. A happy belated birthday to Pooch with Willering at Riverview Manor Nursing Home in Pleasant Valley, Florida. Well, Morandini and McRae, of course. Are now tied for the lead in stolen bases, each having 18. One ball, one strike. Ooh. Boy. <laughs> Man, he takes a good cut. Well, Jamie throws that slider away, keeps it down. He's going to get Incavilia. At times when Inky starts to press and with the wind blowing out now toward left field, Inky might be trying to pull everything. Let's see if this is a good slider. Hey, he made him look bad on that slider, and he struck him out. From the Southwest Airlines plane view camera, we'll take a look at one of the better sliders Jamie's thrown. This one breaks late, breaks sharply, and it's in a perfect spot when you're ahead of the hitter. So in Cavilli, down on strikes. The eighth graders from uh, Batesville, Indiana, are here in a big group. Pat May and Grishanda Deal. Montgomery Ward celebrity bad boy and bad girl here today. There are the youngsters, Pat May and Grishanda Deal. Congratulations. 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two call. Wayne Mesmer sang a national anthem today. As only he can. One ball, two strikes. Ground ball, knock, knocked down. Navarro throws the first. He knocked the ground ball down with his bare hand. He says he's okay. Well, you don't like to see a pitcher do this, but it is a reflex action. And Jamie just reaches down. This one isn't hit all that hard, but he's able to make the play and throw out Zeal. Well, the Cub Farm Clubs are one and one victory and two defeats last night. Iowa won its game over Indianapolis 6-4. Rockford lost to Wisconsin 9-5. And Daytona lost to Vero Beach 3-2. <laughs> A tough day. Cubs lost. 
12 3, there's the base hit. Jim Eisenreich singles the left center. Ray Sanchez has been put on the disabled list. He's operated on today. There's a drive. Santiago cut off by McGray. He's got May hold of the third. He does. Santiago double the left center. Benito Santiago had a great year last year with Cincinnati, and he's starting to pick it up here in Philadelphia. This is a fastball right down the middle. McCray does a nice job of cutting this ball off. If he doesn't get it back into the infield quickly, Eisenreich is going to score from first base. But no way Larry Boa is going to test the arm of Jose Hernandez because he's got a rocket for an arm at shortstop. So I'm not sure if they want to mess around here with Benjamin or just move right on to Mulholland. They're Benjamin gonna, has been all everything. They're going to pitch to him. Runners at second and third, two out. He swings and misses. Benjamin has worn the Cubs out all during his career. In this series, he's four out of seven. Batting 304. Mulholland, fine hitting pitcher. Who's hit one of the longest home runs of the year for the Phillies. And that's probably why they're pitching to Benjamin. 0 and 2. Navarro. Check him out. Over the outside corner. No run. Two hit. Two left. Going to bottom of the second. No score. This is the kind of card that has America talking. With it, people with Medicare are getting all-in-one coverage for their doctor visits, hospital care, prescription drugs, and more. This kind of insurance, called Medicare Part C, may also cover dental care, eyeglasses, hearing aids, fitness programs, vitamins, even healthy meals and rides to the doctor. With this kind of coverage, you do not need a Medicare supplement insurance plan. You will access your benefits through your Medicare Part C plan for one low and oftentimes zero dollar monthly plan premium. You deserve to get the most from your Medicare benefits. Call now for free information that may help you get more coverage for less money. There is no obligation to enroll. Whether for yourself or someone you love, call the number on the screen now. Call now. I'm Greg, I'm 68 years old. I do motivational speaking in addition to the substitute teaching. I honestly feel that that's my calling to give back to younger people. I think most adults will start realizing that they don't recall things as quickly as they used to or they don't remember things as vividly uh, as they once did. I've been taking Prevagen for about three years now. People say to me periodically, man, you got a memory like an elephant. It's really, really helped me tremendously. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. You're watching Cubs Classics presented by Premagen. It's 1990s week. Let's get back to the action. Here's Leo Gomez. Line drive on the first pitch of base hit. Gomez. Singles sharply to center. From the Southwest Airlines plain view camera, take a look at a high fastball drilled into center field. Terry throws a lot of high fastballs. They turn into line drives and fly balls. And you've got to be aware of the move of Mulholland. Look at the lead of Leo Gomez at first base. He could fall back to the bag. Ozzie Timmons swings and misses. Boy, Zeal playing very deep at third.
Well, Holland's got a good slider. He throws it in on the hands of the right handers. High fastball even the count one on one. Terry's started a business in Arizona where he spends the winter and it's called for golf and they design and operate golf courses. He's got a project up and running in Gilbert right now and he's pretty excited about it. Swung and he missed. Gilbert's only a few miles from uh, Phoenix right. Well from Mesa sure it's right down the road from Mesa. Ground ball double plays Terry Mulholland and he gets those ground balls on that good slider to the right hand hitter. There's a smash foul. That ball was hit hard. Boy uh, you got a feel for Timmons. The young guy would like to play every day. There's no place to play him every day. And with very few left handers around he seldom gets a play. One ball two strikes. This is the kind of ball player like uh, Henry Rodriguez. He's lucky enough to get with a team where he ha they have to play him every day. He might become the same kind of star that Henry Rodriguez has become. If he gets an inside slider there's a little room between Zeal and the bag and he just might take it down that way. Ball high ball three. It's really a gamble running with Mulholland. You've got a man behind the plate in Santiago who throws from his knees as well as he does from a standing position. And you can't get a lead on Mulholland. I can't figure out. There's a high fly ball. Otero there under it makes the catch. One away. I really can't figure out why Santiago has played with so many ball clubs. He seems to me like one of the best catchers of recent days. Well, Harry, what happened to him was he got up to a pretty high salary with San Diego and then became a free agent. And if you remember, a lot of players at Homestead during the strike years, uh, he came back. They offered him just a, a decent salary, not a great one. Here's a ground ball to Zeal out at second. Out at out of first double play five four three at the end of two no score top of the third strike call Mulholland has hit a homer earlier this year and it was a tape measure job he swings and he misses Well, Holland hitting 190 with four out of 21. Home run included. Strut come out with a slider. What out? Oh, I know we're missing something. Which of these players has the most continuous tenure with his respective club? The Aflac trivia question. I'd have to say Ozzy. Ozzy Smith. What do you think? Hmm, that's a dandy. I know you're figuring what Arnie's trying to figure out and putting those names up there is. Sure. Sure, let's see it again. Now are you considering the time off that Rhino had? Oh, considering the time off is time played. Ah, there's the rub. <laughs> I, I'm a believing guy. I'm a trusting guy. I never look for any scheme. Well, I'll take <laughs> Rhino. <laughs> One ball, two strengths. Chuck Otero out. Throw the first. Hey, that's three strikeouts in a row for Jamie. And I like the fact that Jamie took a little something off this one because when he was struggling, he had a tendency to just throw everything around the same speed. Hard fastball, hard slider. Here he pulls the string on Otero. He has him well out in front. And if Jamie can do that, 
He's going to be in good shape. There's the Southwest Airlines plane view camera high atop Wrigley Field, giving you those beautiful shots around home plate. Two out. And here is Mickey Mardini. Hey, is Abraham down there? He's usually around on Wednesday. Ground ball, easy out. Grace on assistant. We go to the bottom of the third, no score. Let's pray. As we all hunker down in these tough times, grass keeps growing, livestock still needs to be fed, and there's plenty of hauling to do. Mahindra is here to help. Visit whymahindra.com from the safety of your home and build your own tractor. Your Mahindra dealer will give you a quote and deliver to your land. Mahindra, the official tractor of tough. Get no payments for 90 days and zero down, 0% financing during Mahindra's spring sale. America, your neighbor needs you. Let's help each other through the coronavirus crisis. Marquee Sports Network is partnering with the Salvation Army to deliver food, shelter, and hope in your community. Go to marqueesportsnetwork.com and click to make a donation to the Salvation Army, where all proceeds stay right here in your area to help your neighbors in need. Join Marquee Sports Network, the Salvation Army, and Sinclair Cares, your neighbor needs you campaign. On the next Cubs 162, the gift of perspective in these uncertain times. I'm more worried about going and saying hello to my parents. I got teammates with kids. Four Cubs make the most of their living arrangement. If you're going to be quarantined, it's not a bad place to be quarantined at. Roster hopefuls wait for their chance to shine. Really just focused on being ready for 2020 season, whenever it may be. Cubs 162, new episode premieres Thursday at 530 on Marquee Sports Network. Harry Carey back at Rigby Field. Wayne Larrabee will be along after the inning. The pitch. High fly ball. Hit deep, deep. Otero going back. Near the warning track makes the cut. Hernandez, who won the first game Monday night with a home run, almost reached the center field bleachers today. Is that Abraham? Yeah. <laughs> Did you buy him that hat? Yeah. That's a dandy. I think Princess D got him that hat. <laughs> he knows when you put him on, Arnie. Here's the pitch a little below. And he has many, many relatives in Mexico. So our ratings probably go up when you show them. <laughs> There's the whole family. Abraham is our famous chef at Harry Carey's in downtown Chicago. Coley Newell runs the wheeling store. There's the pitch. Easy out. One of the members of our crew, Mandy Cohn, was having some auto problems earlier, and she'd like to thank. Lewis Auto Shop for helping her out and allowing her to come to the ball game. What happened? Yeah, she got locked out of her car, Harry. So they. Uh, <laughs> you don't in. mean she was locked up? No, no, locked out as opposed <laughs> to locked up. I'm glad you made it, Mandy. You know, even though you never come up and see your old friends anymore. Well, you get those huge promotions, Harry, and you forget the little people that yes, help you right. out on the way up. Well, we're going to make Joe Groove a big person, too. And I'll move him into the truck, and we'll get the same disdainful treatment from him. Pretty soon they'll have to expand the truck. One ball, one strike on McRae. Fouls it off. Well, Holland changing speeds today. 
He's been in and out this year. He's been much better on the road. In his five road starts, he's 4 0 with a 188 ERA. Where he's had his problems has been at home. You know, I, I think McGray seems to have a better swing left handed. I don't know. There's a base hit right handed in the left field. Harry, right handed is his natural side, but like most switch hitters, you really have to pay attention in batting practice to the right side because you're seeing the preponderance yeah. of right hand pitchers. So right. if you're getting 80% of your advance as a left hander, even if the right side is your natural side, you're usually going to yeah. hit better from that side. So Brian McCray now on, and you don't want to get too aggressive with Mulholland because he will pick you off in a heartbeat. There's Rhino's single his first time up out of these 41 hits, 19 of them have been for extra bases. That's almost 50 percent. One ball no strikes two out. No score. High fly ball going to be caught. Eisenreich coming in but Otero makes the catch on the run. So it's no runs one hit one left. As I mentioned Wayne will be coming along. Harry Carey from Rigby Field where at the end of three there is no score. various inventions with the help of new machines built to do the same of this I am certain no invention will ever be devised that is more beautiful more simple and more purposeful than those that nature designs proud server of the most advanced machine on earth now, 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 this ain't no sandwich, because on a sandwich, they ask you if you want cheese. But on a papadilla, cheese is what's holding the whole operation together. Get one now for just six bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, better than a sandwich. Papa John's. And Doug. Give me your hand! I can save you! Lots of money with Liberty Mutual! We customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Without Bernie's, majority of these students probably would not have any books at home. The more that they're able to read and write and communicate with others, the more successful they're going to be getting a job, going to college, all those things we want for them in the future. Having a book in your hand and, you know, reading it and exploring is virtually impossible without Bernie's books. Welcome back to Wrigley Field in Chicago on a beautiful afternoon for baseball and a scoreless duel between two fine pitchers on the mound. Jamie Navarro looks like he's got a good slider today, Steve. I think Jamie Navarro helped turn around his season last game. And look at this effort by Hernandez. But Grace can't come up with it. It might go as a base hit. But now it's got to go as an error also. So it goes as a base hit and an error. So a rocky start here to the top of the fourth inning for the Cubs and Greg Jeffries it seems like he and Benjamin are on base almost constantly when they they're playing against the Cubs. Well Dennis Mankey talking about Greg Jeffries said look if you're a 300 hitter even if you spend time on the disabled list when you come off you're still going to be a 300 hitter. He came off four for five yesterday and he's showing no signs of that hand injury that put him on the shelf. The hitter Pete Incavelia. In Cavillia hit into a 6 4 3 double play in the first. Takes the pitch outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes to count on Pete Incavillia. Pitch up high. 
Let's watch the play again. Hernandez does a nice job of getting to it and sets himself. And Grace can't come up with it. Normally, Mark gets a glove on these. This time he didn't. Two balls and no strikes to count on Incavelia. Chops it on the ground left side. Hernandez chases the runner back to second, makes the throw in time to first, and one away. Well, Jeffries almost got caught. He almost did the same thing Lee Tinsley did, then realized that ground ball was in front of him, and he went back to the bag. This is a real tough hop for Jose Hernandez. Watch this hop. It comes right up, and he comes up with it. And a lesson for all you youngsters keep the glove down so you can come up with the hop. If you set the glove high and the ball flattens out, it's going to go through your legs. Brings up a Todd Zeal, who hit a smash back to the box that Jamie Navarro knocked down with his bare hand. Slider outside, one ball, no strikes. It wasn't a real good at bat for Incavilia because he didn't move along Jeffries. And in a nothing to nothing game, now it takes a base hit to score him from second instead of a fly ball. One ball, no strikes, and Navarro bluffs the runner back to first. Of course, if you're looking at it from the Phillies' point of view, Inky got you two three-run homers yesterday. What more do you want? Well, he got him. <laughs> he got him one to right field, and yesterday was yesterday. One ball, no strikes. There's a strike. One and one. Hit that three-run homer in the fourth inning. To right field, as you mentioned, and that was part of that big six run fourth. It blew the game open. One ball, one strike, runner on second. And again, Navarro bluffs to the bag, but nobody close enough to take a throw. Todd Zeal leads this club in RBIs with 35 and doubles with 12. And that just missed. Two balls at one strike. And Steve Zeal played last year here in Chicago, and it was somewhat disappointing from an offensive standpoint. But he played with an injured hand most of the year, didn't he? He had a thumb injury. He kept getting jammed, and it never really came back. This year, he says he feels 100% healthy. Two-one pitch, fouled back, and it's two and two. Day off tomorrow, then Henry Rodriguez and the Montreal Expos come to town over the weekend. And that should be a good series. We were most impressed with Montreal. We caught them before they went to the West Coast and lost some steam. They were playing real good when we saw them. Two balls, two strikes, and the pitch. Low and away, and the count fills to three and two. The answer to the Aflac question, I would have guessed Ozzie Smith. Cal Ripken. And I was there then and still missed it. <laughs> How about that? 15 years ago. You were a teammate of his? Yes, sir. He must have been a young pup when you were there. On the ground, right side, taken by the second baseman, Sandberg. That moves the runner, Jeffries, on to third, but two men down. In fact, at the time, it was Earl Weaver who made a decision that turned into gold because everybody had slotted Cal Ripken for third base. And really? Doug DeCensis was there at the time and he said I think that even though he's 6 4 I think he can play shortstop and he put him in a shortstop. Well it's worked out fairly well after that. Here's Jim Eisenreich. Eisenreich singled his first trip takes a pitch up high and away for ball one. Although Cal probably hasn't been as durable as you might have liked. No, I obviously not. <laughs> yeah, you know, he'll have to put a few more games together right. to impress you, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Pitch down low in the dirt, gets away from service. First run of the game, crosses the plate. Greg Jeffrey scores. A tough handle in the dirt for Scott Service. We'll take a look and see how it goes. Well, Navarro had three wild pitches early, and then he hasn't made one in about eight or nine starts, but. This one gets away from service, goes as his fourth wild pitch. Here comes Jeffries. He's trying to protect his head, and he scores the first run of the game. There it is. It skips away from Scott's service. Hard slider, and Scott went down, but the ball bounced off his bicep and bounded away. 
Two balls and no strikes. The count on Eisenreich with the bases empty. Backhanded by Sandberg. His throw doesn't have much on it. Pulled Grace off the bag, and Eisenreich is in there with an infield base hit. Rhino double clutched. I don't think he had a handle on this ball, and by the time he got it across, he couldn't get anything on the throw. So he makes a good effort getting to the ball. And right here, you see it, he just doesn't have a grip on it. And then by the time he is drifted away from the play, and the swipe tag misses. Two out, Eisenreich at first for Benito Santiago. He doubled to left center in the second inning. Santiago has really adjusted his batting stance. He's moved well off the plate. This is as far away from the plate as we've seen him. He had a big contract with the Florida Marlins. Then they chose not to renew it, went on to Cincinnati for about 20% of what he made in Florida. Fouled back against the screen for strike one. And Steve, I think you made a good point. This is a very fine catcher, especially from an offensive standpoint, and he has a good arm. He's got a great arm. When he first came up, he was very difficult to run against. Then he went into a throwing slump. And they tried to get him out of the habit of throwing from his knees, but as we've seen in this series, he'll do it and do it pretty well. Here's the one strike pitch that's up high, and it's one and one. The reason he's moved around so much is because of the economics of the game today. At 11 homers and 44 runs batted in or thereabouts at Cincinnati last year. But the Reds in their austerity moves could not afford him. Thus he moves on to Philadelphia. Philadelphia knew that Darren Dalton's days behind the plate were numbered because of all of the knee problems. They tried to slot him into left field. They still believe that Dalton will be back sometime after the All-Star break. Things not looking quite as positive for Lenny Dykstra. And they believe that he just might be lost for the year and the injury might be career threatening. The one one pitch and that's a little high. It's two balls and one strike. On Benito Santiago. Dykstra had back problems continuously the last few years. Then he hurt his side and he couldn't do his back exercises, and things just started to snowball to the point where he could just barely walk around. And they really are worried about Lenny Dykstra and his future as a baseball player. He's meant a lot to this organization. Two and one the count. Two out, runner on first, and a fly ball into right field. Sosa coming hard, still coming, and it drops in down the line. Eisenreich rounding third. They're going to send him home. Here comes the throw, and he slides home safely. Well, that was a great slide by Eisenreich as he slid by the outstretched leg of service and touched the plate with his hand, and a run should not have scored on this ball. Somebody's got to take control. Sandberg looking for Sosa. Sosa can't get to it. Then Sandberg misses it. Sosa can't get to it. And by the time he does, the run scores. And watch the slide. He slides by the plate, but gets it with his hand. A good effort right there. It goes as a double RBI, and the batter takes third on the throw. The throw coming into the plate there. So the Phillies lead it by the score of two to nothing. And Mike Benjamin at the plate takes strike one. And again, as seems to happen to Jamie more often than anyone else on the staff, little things cost him in ball games. Pitch hit high and deep to left field, and it is gone. That wasn't little. That was pretty big by Mike Benjamin. A two-run homer, four runs in in the inning, and it's a 4-0 lead for Philadelphia. Well, you know, you're only down two to nothing, and even though you pitch to Benjamin with runners at second and third the first time up, you throw to Benjamin again here, and he burns you. I'm not sure I under understand this. This fastball's right down the middle. And certainly if Jamie is distracted by the play in right field, it would account for this location, but no. difficult decision. Mulholland at the plate hacks away for strike one. <laughs> Mulholland a strikeout victim in the third. I mentioned the little things infield base hit by Jeffries infield hit by Eisenreich. Wild pitch scores one run then a bloop double down the right field line that falls between Sosa and Sandberg that scores. And then the two run homer. 
pitch taken outside and it's two balls and one strike. The little things and then all of a sudden a big hit like the homer by Benjamin off the screen behind the stands in left field. And here's another broken bat face hit. You're talking about one really well hit ball in this entire inning and the Phillies have five hits in the inning and four runs in. Scott Service going to the mound to talk to Jamie Navarro shaking his head most disappointed Fergie Jenkins coming out. Nobody up in the bullpen to this point. And after the gem that Jamie threw at Florida. This is going to be a little disappointing for him. Bullpen as you mentioned springs to action Jamie trying to compose himself he only needs one more out here. But when you know there's a couple things that come into play yes. It was a tough inning for Navarro. Yes, a couple of balls could have been played differently, but he's still only two to nothing down. Yeah. And instead of maybe regaining his composure, making some good pitches, if you are indeed going to pitch to Benjamin, he threw that fastball right down the middle. It was just a little above the belt, and Benjamin doubled the lead in a hurry. Paul Holland at first, and Otero the hitter, he popped it up. Foul territory. Scott Service giving chase. Does he have room? Nope. It's two rows deep. Scott went into the screen for that one. So it's strike one on Ricky Otero. Infield single by Greg Jeffries. Moved to second on an error by Jose Hernandez. Pete Incavilia grounded out 6 3, the runner at second. Zeal grounded out 4 3, the runner moves to third. Scores on a wild pitch. Infield single Eisenreich double Benito Santiago driving home Eisenreich and that double was just a bloop pop fly down the right field line and then Mike Benjamin on an 0 1 pitch delivers the home run over the left field stands one ball one strike Looks like Scott service wants the fastball there and it's all the glove of Hernandez into shallow left field. Moving on to third base is Mulholland, and the Phillies have runners at the corners. Well, this inning is starting to deteriorate. Jose Hernandez giving you full extension, his best effort at the top of his jump. It barely hits off the end of the glove. And Otero has his first hit of the day. So yesterday was a six run fourth inning and today the Phillies making life miserable for Jamie Navarro and the Cubs here in their half of the fourth. Good effort by Hernandez. He's just playing him a half an inch too short. Mickey Morandini is the ninth hitter in the inning for Philadelphia. Morandini walked in the first grounded out to Grace in the third. Two out two on four runs in pitch up high for ball one. Navarro doesn't get a lot of run support. At least he hasn't so far this season. Cubs are averaging about three runs per game for him, a little over three runs a game. Two balls and no strikes. What is it with these four fourth innings? I get over here and the opposition goes wild. Perry's held him down the first three frames and boom. 2 0 pitch, and that's fouled off. You know what? Maybe I should start coming into the sixth. What do you think? Just change it up a little bit, huh? You never know. Just come in a different time every day. Surprise the folks. That way we keep them off guard. That way there's no four and six run fourth innings here. You know, these people that don't know what to expect. Two balls and one strike. Runners at the corners. Two men down. Pitch is hit toward the gap, left center field. But Louis can or make that Dazi Timmons has range for it and makes the catch. And the inning is over. But the Phillies four runs on six hits. There was an error and two left. Middle of the fourth. It's now Philadelphia four, Chicago nothing. There has never been a better time to have a favorite food. With new Grubhub Plus, you get unlimited free delivery and cash back rewards for ordering noodles. And noodles. And noodles. And noodles. Grubhub Plus, free delivery, cash back, and noodles. Let's pray. As we all hunker down in these tough times, grass keeps growing. Livestock still needs to be fed. 
And there's plenty of hauling to do. Mahindra is here to help. Visit whymahindra.com from the safety of your home and build your own tractor. Your Mahindra dealer will give you a quote and deliver to your land. Mahindra, the official tractor of Tough. Get no payments for 90 days and zero down, 0% financing during Mahindra's spring sale. Unexpectedly, she had to do open heart surgery. It was definitely a tense time. It was good to just come here and feel a little normal <laughs> and to get a nice hot meal and like a nice warm bed. It helps you bring strength to your family. No matter what's ahead, I know that Marla McDonald House will be there for us. They're like family, so they'll, they'll take care of us. We got one of those new purple mattresses, and it is amazing. You have to try it. Oh, this doesn't feel like memory foam. No. This feels amazing. Right? What is it? Actually, it's called purple, and it's a completely unique comfort technology, meticulously designed to cradle and support the human body. Cool. Spring into big savings with Purple's Spring Sale. Visit purple.com slash TV today. Gorgeous day in the bleachers, and that youngster's got the right idea. A little ice cream cone there or whatever. Mark Grace leads it off for the Cubs to the bottom of the fourth inning and takes strike one call. Grace flat out deep to center field in the first. And here's the 0 1 pitch, and that's down low. One ball, one strike. Mark came in two for 15 in his last four games. I'd like to get himself on track here. Been hitting well prior to that. Pitch up high and it's two and one. Mulholland has averaged six innings per start. This is his 12th start. And a lot like Florida with Rob Nen, you want to keep Ricky Batalico out of the game. He is the big save man for this ball club, and he's one of the best short relievers in the game right now. And Terry Mulholland has been much better on the road than he has at home. Boy, if I were the Phillies, I wouldn't even think about starting him at the bat. But on the road, wow. So he is going to be a tough customer to solve for the Cubs here this afternoon. 3 1 pitch to Grace, and there's a base hit. That's a start. Single by Grace to right field. And the Cubs have their leadoff man aboard. Alan Siegel of Mancari, Chrysler Plymouth, and Orland Hills. Also, Dominic Marino of Patrick, Chrysler Plymouth, and Libertyville on hand. And the best day we've had in Chicago for baseball in quite some time. For Cubs baseball. Is there any other kind? I um, don't think so. <laughs> don't Except either. those folks on the south side have really been tuning it up. They're just a game oh. behind Cleveland. They Sox are rolling. Are hot. They are rolling. Swing and a miss by Sosa who flied out to right. His first trip. Fernandez, I believe, was one last night, didn't he? There's the uh, GN box. All the uh, GN programming uh, people are on hand there we go how you doing folks those are the people who take care of our expense reports Tony God bless them they also give us rain delay theater fly ball center field well hit Otero watches it sail and it is gone well, Wayne when I told Harry that Sammy was going to hit a home run off Terry Mulholland today he said, well, you could say that most of the time. I said, I just had a feeling today was his day. And he has the lead. The Cubs only trail by two. That one went all the way up the hitting background. And that was a bomb. I think it went to about the last row in that hitting background. And Sammy Sosa's 18th home run. RBIs 41 and 42 for the season. A promising start to say the least to the bottom of the fourth and here's Leo Gomez one for one a single to right center in the second inning. One ball no strikes. Leo had been hitless in his last four games 0 for 8. Chopped it on the ground to short. Benjamin the throw in time to Jeffries and there's one away. 
Let's take another look at it. A mammoth home run by Sammy Sosa. He gets it down, which is where he wants it, and takes it way back. Otero gives it the courtesy look, but this one is long gone. Yeah, it hit that top row in the hitter's background. My goodness. So a bomb, as you said, from Sammy Sosa. The Cubs are right back in this game, trailing by just two. Ozzie Timmons, the hitter, did he check his swing? They appeal to first base, and Charlie Williams says, nope, ball one. Ozzy just four hits in his last 35 at bats and this is a guy the Cubs would dearly like to get on track but the problem for Ozzy is that he never gets enough at bats due to the preponderance of right handed pitching in Major League Baseball today. One ball and one strike. For Southwest Airlines how far did it fly. Four hundred and forty seven. Long happy feet. Yes, indeed. That would have been just short of the monuments of the old Yankee Stadium. The 1 1 pitch. Popped it up down the right field line, but it's safely foul and out of play. Well, Ozzy Timmons is going to get some action in the Montreal series because Jeff Facero will face Frank Castillo in the first game on Friday. He's a left hander. And Kirk Reeder will face Steve Traxel in the finale on Sunday, and he's a left hander. Sandwiched in between Pedro Martinez against Amari Telemaco on Saturday and that a Saturday night game. One two pitches upstairs. Two balls and two strikes and then we come home and we're going to see some good pitching with what San Diego and L.A. coming to town right. Well, that's after the Philadelphia. Yeah trip. after the Philadelphia three game series. Two balls and two strikes. Timmons puts a charge into this one but he got under it just a bit. Ricky Otero left center makes the catch in their two men down. Ken Caminiti is back in action and playing pretty well for San Diego. But as you know, we talked about it yesterday. Wally Joyner has lost to that team for a minimum of six weeks, maybe more. And San Diego atop the West, playing good solid baseball despite not having a whole lot of power on that team. But Caminiti's presence in the lineup makes them a whole lot tougher. Cardinals beat him last night 11 to 5, but Kaizik got the win in that game. Now 4 0. Morell suffered the loss. Strike one called on Scott Service hit into a 5 4 3 double play to end the second inning. Pittsburgh shut out L.A. last night. Fly ball into right field on the run. Eisenreich to the line runs out of room. Boy, the fan reached out and made a catch. How about that? Reached right over the wall and caught it on the fly. Better him than that guy. Watch this. How about that? Eisenreich might have had a play on that. Or he might have gotten a face burger for his efforts because he was turning away. <laughs> That's true. Trying not to get hit by it. No balls and two strikes. And Scott takes advantage. Well placed base hit down the right field line. And service a big turn to the first base bag. That grass is almost U.S. Open length rough in the outfield here at Wrigley Field and that ball just died down the line. Well, you can understand with all the rain we've yeah. had how the grass would grow and be tough to cut. And now Jose Hernandez with a chance to tie it up with a long ball and you can expect Jose now to start swinging the bat a little better because he's going to get to play every day. Hitting off the bench is a very difficult task. He had 13 home runs off the bench last year. He was off to a slow start this year but now as the man will be at shortstop for quite some time after the surgery to the hand of Ray Sanchez Jose could really help this team and we risk Ray all the best and hopefully we'll see him back here first part of August perhaps and certainly that hand injury had to affect his hitting style this year a lot of fly balls and Ray just trying to play through the pain just couldn't quite get it done and did the best thing and that is take care of the injury and Hopefully return 100 percent for the last couple of months of the season and finish up strong. One ball and one strike the count on Jose Hernandez. Two men down and he swings at some high gas. Mulholland climbing the ladder on him that time. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Phillies put a four spot on the board in the top half of this inning. The Cubs have come back on a two run homer by Sosa. Called strike three on Jose Hernandez, and the inning is over. Two runs, 
on three hits. No errors at a man left. End of four. Phillies four, Cubs two. Your brain is an amazing thing. But as you get older, it naturally begins to change, causing a lack of sharpness or even trouble with recall. Thankfully, the breakthrough in Prevagen helps your brain and actually improves memory. The secret is an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. In clinical trials, Prevagen has been shown to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Home is more important than ever. At Overstock, we're committed to delivering on all your home needs. Starting now, everything ships for free. Big or small, Overstock, where quality costs less and everything ships free. These are uncertain times, but we at First Midwest Bank remain strong, remain committed to our clients, to our communities. And we want those who are uncertain in these uncertain times to know that even though we currently all need to stay apart, we are all in this together. First Midwest Bank. Tell us we can't, and we'll prove you wrong. Knock us down, and we'll get right back up. Call us risk takers, misfits. Bad boys. But we know what we want, and it feels like American muscle. Looks like advanced engineering, and smells like fresh cut grass. Bad boy. Mow with an attitude. presented by Premagen. It's 1990s week. Let's get back to the action. Got the kids out. A lot of field trips. This is a uh, couple of weeks of field trips before the end of school, and then the kids will be here every day. How about that? Four to two Phillies. We go to the top of the fifth, and the Phillies send up the meat of the order. Jeffries in Cavillia and Zeal to face Jamie Navarro. Suffered through a four-run, six-hit fourth inning. Well, there's a long way to go in this one. You figure to do a little more scoring against Terry Mulholland. So Jamie Navarro has to put last inning out of his mind and look ahead because this is going to be a tough inning for him. He's got to get out of it, turn it back over to his offense. Jeffries, first pitch to him off the glove of Grace into right field, a base hit. Jeffries a big turn, but Sosa up with it. Scored a base hit. Took a bad hop on Grace. Well, there's been a couple of bad hops in that infield today. Mark Grace staying with this one, and all of a sudden it came to him with a lot of overspin and just took that high hop the ball actually went under the glove as Mark Grace tried to anticipate where it would go you watch it here justifiably scored a base hit that brings up Pete Incavelia quiet today yesterday a couple of home runs and six RBIs I think he's the original good man for two if you can get him to hit the ball on the ground hammered foul on the right side but he's a more often than not a fly ball hitter and he only has hit it a one ground ball double play this year fly ball or strikeout National League best lines yesterday six runs batted in for Inky Klesko another big day and John Cangelosi now playing center field mm -hmm. for Houston having a good day he hit that home run right handed did they move Hunter into uh, left field checked his swing and that's a ball one ball one strike. I'm not sure if he played left field yesterday or not. They I were talking about doing something with him. That like I think that. they wanted to shift him out of center where he's had some problems defensively. Cangelosi, pretty handy man to have around. He always has a high on base percentage. One ball and one strike. Hmm. Nobody out. Runner on first and the pitch is dumped foul behind home plate in the upper deck out of play. Well, now if Jamie can throw the good slider and keep it low and away one of two things are going to happen. He's going to strike him out. Or get the ground ball to the left side. I think he looks like he's intent on trying to pull Jamie today. The wind is blowing toward the left field corner. And you have to keep your eye on Jeffries. Yeah, the classic Wrigley Field scoreboard. 
often imitated, never really copied very well. When you see that, you know exactly where you are. Pitch down low, and it's two balls and two strikes. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Chicago today. And we anticipate a good weekend homestand coming up against the Montreal Expos, one of the surprise teams in baseball. Two balls and two strikes. And Jeffries chased back to first base. Philadelphia fourth in stolen bases. They've swiped 56. And they've been remarkably successful. They've only been thrown out 11 times. Jamie Navarro home runs for inning pitched. Popped it up. Grace may have a play on it. S service giving a look and it's about three rows deep. Incavilia went to Japan last year where they tried to teach him how to be a different hitter. They wanted him to finish up his swing like Fred McGriff and David Justice of Atlanta that sweeping hand finishing high above his head. Well, flexibility is an inky's long suit and he could never get the type of hitting stroke that they wanted him to adopt so he didn't do anything over there. He wanted to come back and play for the Phillies and he's come back with a resurgent year after his Japanese experience. Two balls and two strikes on Incavilia. Jeffries on at first and nobody out. Top of the fifth inning of the Cubs trailing by two and Jamie takes a little too much time and Incavilia wants a timeout. Well if Jamie's noticed it Jeffries has got another foot on his lead at first base. Let's see if he's ready to go. And the pitch swing and a miss strike three. Incavilia down on strikes for the second time this afternoon and one man down. Jamie uses that outside corner and he uses it well. This is a fastball however. Perfect pitch throws it by Inky. And five good man for two. Zeal coming up. Five strikeouts for Jamie Navarro. Frank Castillo, Jim Bullinger, a couple of guys who have struggled in the rotation recently. Frank was working today on the side. Todd Zeal is grounded out twice and strike one call. Mentioned the Phillies do a good job of stealing bases. They're also number one of the National League in walks. Uh, the toss over to first base to keep Jeffries close. The Phillies have the top stolen base percentage in the league. No balls in one strike. Here's the pitch. Back through the middle, base hit center field. On his way to third base is Jeffries. McCray's throw comes into Sandberg. Runners at the corners with one man down. And that was a rocket back through the middle. Jamie able to get out of the way of it as Zeal takes it right back at him. Navarro using a little too much of the plate. Can't get the glove up in time. And Jeffries easily into third base. So runners at the corners. For one of the better left hand hitters in the league just strictly a pure average hitter Jim Eisenreich and I've been watching this guy for a long time Wayne I don't think there's any one way to pitch him he hits the ball all over and doesn't seem to have one specific weakness Eisenreich hits it hard and dumps it into left field base hit that scores Greg Jeffries and the Phillies increase their lead to five to two. Well, this figured to be a tough inning for Navarro as Jim Riggleman now coming out. Service wanted the ball inside, and Navarro misses his spot. You see where Scott sets up. Jamie throws this one out away from Eisenreich, which is exactly where he wants it. And he just dumps it in the left field, driving in his 16th run of the year. He's three for three. And the Phillies now lead by three. So, whereas in the last inning, the Phillies had two infield hits and a bloop double. They've had some solid base hits here. Single a rocket through the middle by Zeal and Eisenreich. Hit a shot to left field. So brings up Benito Santiago. 
with one out and one on. Make that uh, runners at first and second. One out and two on. Santiago, a pair of doubles today. One to left, the other one, the bloop to right. Cubs are trailing five to two, and here's the pitch by Navarro. And it's lined at Sandberg. They've got a chance at first, but Grace wasn't quite back in time to make a play on Eisenreich, and he is back in safely, two men down. The Phillies haven't run the bases too well in this series, but they do a good job here. This ball hit off the end of the bat. Rhino immediately looking at first base, but it was slowly hit, and Eisenreich was able to get back. So now we have to deal with the demon against the Cubs. <laughs> Mike Benjamin. Boy, has he been tough. Benjamin, a two run homer in the fourth inning. Takes the pitch down low. Nice block by Scott Service. One ball, no strikes. Benjamin, one for two today. 16 for 30. Three home runs, seven RBIs in his last six games here at Wrigley Field. One ball, no strikes. There's a strike. Well, I always call Mark Lemke of Atlanta the pest because he seems to get base hits against the Cubs that really hurt him. And very slowly, Benjamin has fallen right into that pest <laughs> list. He's really gotten some big hits. 1 1 pitch. Base hit center field and scoring on the play. They wave around Todd Zeal and the Phillies have another run in and they lead by the score of six to two. And RBI number 10 for Benjamin when you have confidence that you can hit against a certain ball club it really doesn't matter who they put on the mound. This is a pretty good pitch. This is a slider. It's thigh high and it really didn't look like a strike and Benjamin reaches out hits it just out of the reach of Jose Hernandez driving in his third run of the day. Moves Eisenreich over to third. Benjamin on at first. The pitcher Terry Mulholland, one for two today, singled in that fourth inning. Six to two Phillies. Strike on the outside corner from Navarro. Mulholland had been hot coming into this game at the plate, I mean. Hitting 429, three for seven. With a double homer, a couple of RBIs in the last three games. Jamie's given up 12 hits today. And Wayne if you notice one thing when Jamie has gotten in trouble it's like a boxer when he starts getting hit and doesn't tie up the opposing boxer tries to hit him harder and eventually right. gets knocked out and Jamie gets aggravated on the mound at times and tries to throw everything harder than the last pitch he loses the idea of finesse and everything comes in the same speed one one pitch and it's two balls and one strike well that's all part of what we talk about composure right. I mean, that's, you know, you've got to play your game, regardless of the situation. Two balls and one strike. Runners at first and third. Fouled back, and it's two and two. Old baseball adage says, and Greg Maddox learned this after his early years, Greg would get mad and try to throw the ball a little harder. So if your fastball is 88 and you try to throw it as hard as you can to get it to 90, it doesn't help you. You can get more people taking something off than you can putting something on. 2 2 pitch. Did he go around? Yes, he did. Try to check his swing. It's strike three. The inning is over, but not before. The Phillies pick up two runs on four hits. They lead two. Middle of the fifth. Again, it's a four run. Philadelphia leads six to two. You're watching Marquee Sports Network. On Cubs 162, Wilson Contreras confronts offseason trade rumors. There's a business side and there's a personal side. David Ross begins his inaugural campaign as manager. Open your ears, scouts. Cubs 162 on Marquee Sports Network. And Doug. can save you lots of money with Liberty Mutual 
We customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. After I came home from Iraq, I could still hear the booms. Makes it hard to be a good mom. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I'm Naomi Mathis, Air Force veteran. DAV helps veterans get the benefits they've earned. Thanks to DAV, I was able to begin to heal. With the right support, more veterans can reach victories great and small. My victory is being able to be here for my children. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Get to know where to place your next bet on Follow the Money on Marquee Sports Network. Vegas veterans Mitch Ross and Paulie Howard host this hour-long show, share their knowledge of sports and gambling. The Cubs always take money, so it doesn't matter. Everyone would come to town to bet the Cubs win the World Series, no matter who was on the team. Get the most up-to-date information in live odds, predictions, and betting trends from the sports gambling capital of the world. Follow the money, live weekday mornings at 6 on Marquee Sports Network. Todd Haney leads off for the Cubs here in the bottom of the fifth inning pinch hitting for Jamie Navarro Haney two for eight is a pinch hitter with a walk and a couple of sacrifice punts. Of course he's not in a sacrifice situation of any kind right now. He's just trying to get on base. Cubs are trailing by the score of six to two and it's ball one. Still a long way to go. The wind blowing out here a very lively day. And the Phillies are not out of sight. So the Cubs have a lot of opportunity against Terry Mulholland. Haney has gone six for 47 at the plate in his last 19 games. Strike called, and it's one ball, two strikes. Here's the one two pitch. Hit on the ground, right side. Greg Jeffries up with it, and he waves off Mulholland, wins the race to the bag, one away. Brian McCray, the hitter, one for two, a single in the third. One out, nobody on in the bottom of the fifth inning here at Wrigley Field. Brian trying to button his way on, fouls it off. Everything considered, despite the Phillies, it is nonetheless a gorgeous day at Wrigley Field. It would be an even better day if the Cubs come back and win. But that's something we, and apparently Mother Nature, has very little control over. The 0 1 delivery and a wave and a miss by McCray. No balls and two strikes. Family day at the ballpark. Always a good time to bring the kids to see baseball. Dig that stuff out of there, but boy, once you get it out, it's good. The 0 2 delivery. Taken down low, one ball, two strikes. So the book closed on Jamie Navarro at five innings. He gave up six runs on 12 hits. He walked just one through a wild pitch, fan six, and gave up a homer to Mike Benjamin. One ball and two strikes on Brian McCray. And McCray stays alive, nubs it foul toward the Phillies dugout. The Phillies go from here following an off day tomorrow. Into the Astrodome to take on the Houston Astros. One and two the count on Brian McRae. The only thing consistent about the Cubs this season. On the ground is shortstop Benjamin to Jeffries. Two men down. The only thing consistent about the Cubs this season in their game has been inconsistency. I was talking to Scott Service before the game today. Every time you think you get a pitcher on track, all of a sudden he goes south on you. Every time you get a hitter in a good groove, all of a sudden you're looking at 0 for 15 or 2 for 20, something like that. It has been in each facet of the game inconsistency that has haunted the Cubs through this season. Ryan Sandberg takes the pitch down low. And that's why at Lynch a couple of weeks ago the general manager said I can't really get a handle on this team. It's it's hard to get a feel for it. Certainly uh, this club could use a, a stop or a Rob Nen type in the bullpen. No doubt about that. Certainly this club could use another power hitter but in the realm of what you can do to help this ball club it's very hard to 
to put your finger on on a weakness because it changes so often. This is well hit to left. Ryan Sandberg and it's gone. Rhino's 12th home run of the season. RBI number 27, the Cubs trail only by three with a lot of at bats left. And Sandberg took it out of the ballpark against the back screen. Second home run given up by Mulholland. And it's a high fastball. And it's gone. Steve, one thing Rhino's been able to do, and this is why the baseball people talk about bat speed, when somebody makes a mistake to him, more often than not, he's been able to take it out. Grace hits it on the ground to second. Morandini to Jeffries in the inning is over, but the Cubs do get a run back on the solo home run by Ryan Sandberg here in the fifth. And we are heading to the sixth inning with the Phillies leading six to three. Do you have concerns about mild memory loss related to aging? Prevagen is the number one pharmacist recommended memory support brand. You can find it in the vitamin aisle in stores everywhere. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. I had kind of given up hope. I wasn't gonna spend $12,000 on hair plugs, um, but I tried this and it was great and I've never looked back. I brush my teeth in the morning. I had braces when I was a child. We take care of other parts of our body. You can take care of your hairline. It's okay. I mean, I'm just grateful that the products work so well, that they're so convenient, uh, and that I don't have to stress out about losing my hair anymore. Don't wait until you lose more hair. Go to 4 right now. Without Bernie's, majority of these students probably would not have any books at home. The more that they're able to read and write and communicate with others, the more successful they're going to be getting a job, going to college, all those things we want for them in the future. Having a book in your hand and, you know, reading it and exploring is virtually impossible without Bernie's books. There's never been a better time to have a favorite food. With new Grubhub Plus, you get unlimited free delivery and cash back rewards for ordering noodles. And noodles. And noodles. And noodles. Grubhub Plus, free delivery, cash back, and noodles. Back at Wrigley Field in Chicago, top of the sixth inning, Wayne Larrabee, Steve Stone, Harry Carey. The Cubs are trailing six to three. And the Philadelphia Phillies bring the top of the order to the plate. Little Ricky Otero singled his last trip. He's won for three. They're into the corners, and Otero takes strike one. Terry Adams on the mound at one and one. ERA 288 on for the 23rd time. Span 24, walk 21 in 34 and a third innings, and there you look at the numbers. This is outside. One ball and one strike. Otero hit his first major league homer the other night against Steve Traxel. And he pulls this one down the right field line, foul into the stands. Otero came over from the New York Mets, where he had very little opportunity to play. But when Lenny Dykstra went down, Otero getting his chance here in Philadelphia. He's played a solid center field, and he's really surprised him with the bat. The pitch. Looped into left field, but right at Ozzie Timmons, and he makes the catch. Mickey Morandini, the hitter, takes the pitch inside and low for ball one. Morandini walked in the first, grounded to Grace in the third, flied out to Timmons in the fourth. There's a strike call. One ball, one strike. And the Vikings are here, or their fans anyway. A little bit early. I don't think the Minnesota Vikings are going to be here till September at least. Swing and a miss by Morandini, who has an 11-game hitting streak on the line. Pretty good slider by Terry Adams. He kept that one away from Morandini. 
Steve really the key you feel for Adams he's got the live fastball but he needs to get that slider over consistently doesn't he. A little more command of the slider but you have to have patience with young pitchers. And he's got enough talent and has shown enough. that The Cubs will have a lot of patience. And they're going to run him out there and give him his opportunity. Three balls and two strikes on Mickey Barandini. Greg Jeffries waits on deck. Payoff pitch. That's ball four. I have to contend with a very good base runner. We showed you the graphic earlier. Morandini, 18 for 18 in stolen bases. One of the longest streaks in the major leagues. Jim Riggleman looking out. And Jeffries would play a grand total of three games all season long before he dove head first, tore up his thumb, went on the disable list. And he's come back with a vengeance. The last two games, including today, Jeffries has six hits in this series. Four hits yesterday, two today. He scored twice today, and he looks at strike one call. Of course, that shouldn't be surprising to Cub fans because Jeffries came in with a career 349 average against Chicago. Morandini at first. The 0 1 pitch to the plate. A chopper over the head of Gomez. Hernandez makes a try at second base, but in safely as Morandini. It's another infield base hit for the Phillies, their third of the afternoon. These guys are swinging magic wands today. There's a lot of balls they haven't hit very hard, but they're finding great spots. Very hard in front of home plate, and a good effort by Hernandez, but he cannot get it to second base in time. So it's Adams and Inky. Pete and Cavilia today 0 for 3. Runners at first and second. Problem within Cavilia is when you're looking at 0 for 3, he becomes overdue at the plate. Here's the pitch hit on the ground, right side. Sandberg to Hernandez to Grace, and the inning is over. 4 6. Three double play hit into by Incavelia ends the inning. No runs, a base hit, no errors. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, it's 6 3 Phillies. On the next Cubs 162, the gift of perspective in these uncertain times. I'm more worried about going and saying hello to my parents. I got teammates with kids. Four Cubs make the most of their living arrangement. If you're going to be quarantined, it's not a bad place to be quarantined at. Roster hopefuls wait for their chance to shine. Really just focus on being ready for 2020 season, whenever it may be. Cubs 162. New episode premieres Thursday at 530 on Marquee Sports Network. Doing the things we love can be painful. Asper Cream's Triple Effect provides targeted relief, works in minutes, lasts for hours. Love hurts. Asper Cream works. Sport has the power to unite. It has the power to build communities. It has the power to break down barriers and allow people to feel as though they're on equal footing with one another. We at Cubs Charities have the ability to do some critical work right now, utilizing the power that sports has in building community, in inspiring hope, and uniting a city. Let Marquee Sports Network deliver fresh baseball news and analysis to you with Cubs 360 Daily. Though baseball may be on pause, we're pulling together the most knowledgeable voices coming to you daily from their home to yours. I think all baseball fans, all of us, appreciate the fact that they're working very hard to, to try to make this happen. Cubs 360 Daily, fresh each weeknight at 6 on Marquee Sports Network. Proudly presented by Miller Lite. Sammy Sosa leads it off for the Cubs in the bottom of the sixth inning against Terry Mulholland. And he hits a high fly ball deep to left again. And it's gone to Waveland Avenue and beyond. Sammy 
Sosa's second of the day, 19th of the season. Well, you said one. You had a feeling in those old bones of yours, and I guess you I told were right. Sammy before the game as he was coming in, Sammy, this is going to be your day today. And he's making it his day, and now all he has to do is get some of his teammates to help him out. It's now a two run lead, still with a long way to go. And Terry Mulholland, who had given up just six home runs all year long coming into this, has given up three today. So Sammy's gone long ball twice. And there was no doubt about either of them. They were both Rockets. Take another look at it as Sammy Sosa gets a fastball out over the plate where he can extend fully and he takes it way back on the wavelength. So Sammy Sosa doing the job here this afternoon and Leo Gomez the hitter it's at ball one. Leo a single and two trips to the plate. Well it's not over yet and with the wind blowing out especially to left center field. Six runs may not be enough to win this game. Six runs won't be enough to win this game. <laughs> OK. We'll just have to hope that Terry Adams can throw like he threw last inning and hold him right there. Leo hits a fly ball left center field. Otero coming on makes the catch. Ozzy Timmons to the plate with one out nobody on. Ozzy has flied out to center field twice. There's a strike call. The Cubs came in and Harry mentioned the fact that they, they don't have a lot of power hitters dotting this lineup but they came in nonetheless ranked third in the National League in home runs and as Steve pointed out have three here today off Mulholland. The 0 1 delivery and backhanded by Benjamin at short from the deep hole makes the throw in time to get Ozzie Timmons fine play. For Southwest Airlines how far did it fly for Ryan Sandberg. 370 happy feet and for Sammy substantially longer 396 very happy feet I would have guessed 400 on that one but <laughs> Arnie Harris is always right the customer and Arnie Harris are the only two people I know of that are always right swing and a miss by Scott service well, Mike Benjamin turned in a sparkling play at shortstop on Ozzy Timmons. Yes, he did. So not only with the bat, but with the glove, he's had a flawless series. Get him out of here, Stoney. I don't want to see him after today. We're going to get a good look at him in a couple days in Philadelphia. <laughs> well, the 0-1 delivery. Fouled back by Scott Service. No balls and two strikes. Service one for two. Bullpen continues to work for both Philadelphia and the Cubs. Looks like Mike Perez. That's who it is for the Cubs. And on the other side, looks like Toby Borland. Cubs are trailing by the score of six to four here. And now apparently a ball got away from the bullpen. I gotta believe that if Terry Mulholland has any problems at all with service, I don't think Jim Fergosi is going to let him face Hernandez, who is a home run threat. There is Mrs. Rhino on the left of your screen. Margaret. No balls and two strikes. Pitches. Apparently he swung and missed at it and ruled strike three. Scott tried to hold up his swing but could not, and he goes down on strikes. The Cubs do get a run on the leadoff homer by Sammy Sosa. And they're back in the game. Harry will take you the rest of the way. Philadelphia leading by the score of six to four through six innings of play here at Wrigley Field. When you run a business in Chicago, you have to be ready to put in the hours, put in the work, brave the elements. Running a business here comes with ups and downs. The downs make you tougher. The ups keep you pushing. At Wintrust, we know what that's like because we started here too, with one small location and have found a way forward. No one knows how to support a Chicago business like another. From us to you, keep going. We've got your back. Sure. Yeah, we all want to know, honey. So. 
Blue. Blue means boy. Blue means boy. If you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. This right here is the new Papadilla, which, if I'm not mistaken, is Latin for better than a sandwich. <laughs> Even has a better pickle. Get a new Papadilla for six bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, better than a sandwich. Papa John's. Tell us we can't, and we'll prove you wrong. Knock us down, and we'll get right back up. Call us risk takers, misfits, bad boys. But we know what we want, and it feels like American muscle. Looks like advanced engineering, and smells like fresh cut grass. Bad boy, mow with an attitude. Harry Carey and Steve Stone, well, boy, oh, boy, you are psychic. <laughs> you said that the Sammy's going to hit one today, hit two. And both of them bombs. The Cubs still trail by two, and it's up to Terry Adams to hold them right there. Well, I tell you, if the here's a ground ball, easy out, good throw, get him, and does. Uh, if Sammy could only have put a couple more men off base for each one of those home runs. <laughs> but we can still win this game, you know. Well, I think the Cubs are going to come back. It's just a question of who they come back against. I don't know how much longer Terry Mulholland's going to be around. But here's one of the men who have really been tough against the Cubs today, Jim Eisenreich. Don't you want to mention Mike Benjamin? Yeah, you always mention Mike Benjamin as far as the Cubs are concerned. He sure murders the Cubs. It would be a good idea to get Benjamin on the Cubs just so they don't have to play against them. Here's a high pop fly they've been dropping today, but Tim makes the catch. Two away. Zeal grounded off the shot. Eisenreich pop. To Timmons. Boy, a tough fourth inning, and that seems to be don't bet on the number four horse, Arnie. Yesterday they got six runs on five hits in the fourth inning. Today, four runs on six hits in the fourth inning. To men around Santiago. He's had two doubles, hit the ball hard every time up. Pretty good crowd all of a sudden. The bleachers are packed. One ball, one strike. <laughs> Pete Rose used to do what Mike Benjamin is doing now to the Cubs. Pitch outside. Two balls and the strike. Only game in the National League this afternoon. One game in the American League of Milwaukee. Brewers leading four to two at the end of five. Grand ball is short. Hernandez, good throw, get him. One, two, three. We go in the bottom of the seventh, but comes trailing six to four. Sing along with Harry. The seven inning stretch is brought to you by your friends at right. Budweiser. Let me hear you. Good and loud. All right, Gary. One, a two, a three. Take me up to
there's never been a better time to have a favorite food. With new Grubhub Plus, you get unlimited free delivery and cash back rewards for ordering noodles. And noodles. And noodles. And noodles. Grubhub Plus, free delivery, cash back, and noodles. And Doug. Give me your hand! I can save you! Lots of money with Liberty Mutual! We customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Hey guy. Hi there. Welcome to Hymns. I should have done it years ago, and I feel like the young stud that I always imagined I was. Outstanding product. Works above and beyond our expectations. This has been a life changer, even in just a few weeks. Featured in GQ, Playboy, and Men's Health. Find out what all the buzz is about. Go to 4 slash ed and get started with a free online visit while supplies last. These are uncertain times, but we at First Midwest Bank remain strong, remain committed to our clients, to our communities. And we want those who are uncertain in these uncertain times to know that even though we currently all need to stay apart, we are all in this together. First Midwest Bank. Carry with Steve Stone and Wayne Larravee as we go down to the bottom of the seventh. Toby and Borland coming into Toby the game. Toby Borland. And he's given up six home runs in 32 and a third innings. Record good three and one. ERA high at 473. And he's a side wheeler. Tomorrow's an open day, but Friday, Montreal will be here. Henry Rodriguez of Montreal leads the National League with 21 home runs. And Sammy Sosa is now up to 19. So Hernandez gets a base on ball. Scott Bullitt, who was just activated when Ray Sanchez went on the DL, now getting a look. And remember, when a left-hander starts against the Cubs, the bench of Jim Riggleman gets a lot stronger because you've got Magadan and Gonzalez to come off the bench against <clears throat> the right-handed relievers. So a couple of pretty good left-handed sticks along with Brett Barbary, a switch hitter. So there's a very balanced bench for Jim Riggleman. Scott Bath Bullet pitch hitting. A runner at first, nobody out. Inside. One ball, no strikes. The makings of a good inning here. If Bullet could do something. McRae, Sandberg, and Gray's coming up next. Left-handers usually get a very good look at Borland. A little bit outside, ball two. Six straight bad ones. And now Mickey Morandini coming in to have a talk with him. Jim Riggleman looking over his lineup card just to see if Jim Fregosi is going to make a change, and if he does, who he can go to. Nobody out, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. 6 4, Phillies lead. Bright sunshine, beautiful day. Strike call. Kirk Wendell loosening up in the pen. A very good outing for Terry Adams. Two balls and a strike. Second base racing for third. And runners at first and third, nobody out. Hernandez went from first to third on bullet single to right. If you're a side armor, left handers are gonna see that ball all the way. And right handers have some problems with Borland. But he walked the right hander, gave up the base hit, and now runners at the corners. A low fastball, Scott Bullet, a good low fastball hitter. 
And he makes a triumphant return after leaving to a cracked rib. Borland stands 6'6. Six, six. He's out of Quitman, Louisiana. Runners first and third. They base hit. Now it's a six to five ball game. Runners in first and third. On the first pitch, McRae lined a single or right. And the Cubs trailing only by a run with nobody out. RBI number 20, hit and run. Another low fastball and another fine swing. So the Cubs have shot Borland, who's come in just in time as far as they're concerned. Here comes Jim Fragosa. He might have seen just about enough of Mr. Borland at this point with runners at the corners and nobody out. And the Cubs moving to the heart of the order. That's going to be it for Borland. That's going to be all for Borland. And we'll tell you more about the new pitcher coming in in a moment. Harry Carey back in the ballpark, 6-5. The Cubs only one run back. Runners first and third and nobody out. <laughs> Let's see who's got the hottest ticket in town. Hey! I, the Abraham, our own chef. I'm going to have to call him up. Russ Springer coming into the ball game, one and four, 398 ERA, span 38 and 31 and two thirds innings, but he has a tendency to get wild. He pitched an inning in yesterday's game, gave up a hit but no runs. Sandberg homered his last time up, takes a strike ball. Rano now has hit 12 homers. It was 42 hits, 20 of them for extra bases. There goes the runner up first. He's got a stolen base. His 19th of the year, no play. Well, Springer just forgot about Brian McRae, who represents the go ahead run, and he just trotted into second. That takes the double play out of order. Infield has to move back. They're going to concede the tying run. A base hit puts the Cubs ahead. Runners at second and third. Nobody out. Ground ball. Here's a man who tried to score. He's saved. Boy, oh boy. And, they, and now they throw the ball away at third base. Both run score. And the Cubs have taken the lead. Boy, oh boy. I tell you, there's what speed will do for you. The runner ran bullet on the on the contact. As soon as the ball was hit, he was streaking for the plate. Watch it again on a great slide. Here comes Bullet. Here comes the throw. He just gets the leg in ahead of the tag. And then Santiago trying to do some umpiring with Bruce Fremming. And because of that, he throws the ball away. And the Cubs go on top as the ball goes into left field. Margaret Sandberg very happy about that. Boy, I tell you, Scott Bullard's speed was electrifying. As Zeal picked the ball up, it looked like he might be out. But he just beat the throw in a, and slid under the catcher. Goes a fielder's choice, run batted in, air on Santiago. And after all that, the Cubs have the lead. Here's Grace, the pitch, swung on. High fly ball. Sandberg tagging up, holds on though at second. One away. The Cubs lead seven to six. And here's Sosa. He's hit his 18 and then his 19 here today. There's a target they're holding for Sammy. with 43 runs batted in. Sandberg with 22. Sandberg with 12 homers. Second to Sammy Sosa with 19. Oh boy. He had a great cut at that. He just fouled it off. 
crowd very, very excited. This ball game is turned around. Samber with his 27th and 28th runs batted in for the year. Has 12 homers. He's on second base. There's a drive. Way back. Way back. Might be. It is. Holy cow. Holy cow. Look at Sammy. And is this crowd ever electrified? What an amazing line drive into the center field bleachers. And the Cubs have taken a commanding lead, hopefully. Look at the Philly dugout in contrast to the jubilant Chicago Cub dugout. Three home runs in succession. And he may still come up today in the eighth. Listen to the crowd. There's Sammy getting coming out to tip his cap. Boy, oh boy. He now has batted in five runs today. He now has 20 homers, 45 RBI. And the Cubs now lead nine to six. Well, it's a hat trick. If this was hockey, that's three goals. So they're throwing hats out on the field. The baseball equivalent of the hat trick. A lot more rare, by the way. Three home runs in one game. Cal Ripken did it earlier, and Sammy Sosa now does it today. And he may still have a chance to make it four in the eighth inning. We don't want him to come up in the ninth. If he doesn't bat in the ninth, it means he comes along with the ball game without any question. As it is, they're leading nine to six right here. They once trailed four to nothing. Then they trailed six to two. They're still standing on the bleachers. Sammy. Boy, I tell you, this last one was a line drive. I don't know which one was hit the hardest. I would bet on the third one. And Harry, the first one went 447 feet. Almost went to the second part of the bleachers yeah, but, up there. Yeah, but it was a fly ball. Oh, yeah, long, long fly ball. <laughs> <laughs> he almost hit that target. Look at Sammy, is he a happy young man?